Okay, we can start. Thanks for uh, joining my session today. Uh, just to break the ice before getting into the weed, uh, I'm proposing you a, a quick survey. Just a couple of simple questions, if you can bear with me. Uh, you, you just want to uh, scan with your smartphone this QR code, and uh, there are two simple questions. And uh, I, I usually do that just to, to share some insights before, before starting, okay? So I leave you a few seconds to scan the QR code. Take your time. Let's wait still a few seconds. Okay, so the first question you should be able to see, it's about, uh, okay, apart from the ChatGPT and uh, OpenAI AI models, do you know any other AI models? If you, you, you can write the models you know, or if you don't know, just put that known, okay? There's no shame, very easy, okay? Okay. So, uh, yeah. Well, good. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. So I see that many of you know uh, a lot of other AI models. Some of them, I would say partially open. Some of them proprietary, okay. Thank you. Thank you. The, the second question is, uh, do you know any open source AI model? Or that you think are open source? You can put none also here if you are not sure about that. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, very interesting. Thank you, thank you for bearing with me. I, I, I finished with the question. <laughs> so let's get back to the presentation and let's start. Well, uh, the first question was about the, the AI models apart from the most famous one. And uh, this is the situation uh, begin of the year. You can see there are many other, looking at the LLM or LMM models, there are plenty of them. If you jump on Hugging Face, which is probably most part of you know about that, one of the largest AI model repositories, uh, almost one month ago, that was the situation. We are talking about more than 800,000 AI models. Probably now they are close to 900,000. I need to check. Of course, many of them are, I would say, experimental models, very niche models, but you can find a huge number of models, okay? Um, in terms of open source AI, we, we, we should have probably a few hours to talk about this. Um, I found out recently a nice paper from two guys from a Netherlands university, and they, they talked about uh, open washing. And uh, actually, um, they classified a lot of AI models that you can see here in terms of uh, open source code. Uh, that you can find on their website, on GitHub, or, or other repositories. So the possibility to retrieve source code, they used uh, for training, testing, validation of the models, uh, the documentation, and the access, okay? So it probably came <laughs> as a surprise that uh, many of the AI models that I noticed before 
actually they are not open source at all. Mm? Maybe some of them are open weight, mm? meaning they provide you some way to play with the weights, the hyperparameters of the neural networks, but they don't provide you the code they used for, do, for performing the training. Um, they don't provide you the data set. They use that for that, maybe for privacy, maybe for other reasons. Mm -hmm. There are some pretty good open, AI, um, open source models, uh, and, uh, but not all of them are. And especially the most famous one are not really completely open source, I'd say. Um, the Linux Foundation, I think yesterday, I, I noticed that Gabriele talked about this, released um, a framework to evaluate the level of openness of the AI models. You can have a look at that. It's very good. Um, and this is one of the applications that you can use to evaluate the openness of the model. Uh, well, a few words about me. Uh, I'm, uh, I've been working on, uh, on AI for the latest 10 years now. Uh, I have 25 years of experience, especially in telco industry. And in AI, uh, I'm quite specialized in conversational AI, conversation analysis. Uh, this year, I've been able to publish three papers. Um, one about ethical conversational AI, the other about a specific application for inside conversational analysis for mental health care. And what we are talking about today, it's this uh, uh, paper I'm going to share with you, which is public on archive. It's about AI interoperability, especially conversational AI interoperability. So first of all, what is it conversational AI? Because, of course, artificial intelligence is a very general purpose concept. Hmm? There are many applications. So conversational AI is one of the most prominent, I would say. It's not the only one that you can find. And yeah, we, we, we are talking about conversational AI whenever we use I don't know, Alexa at home hmm, to play music, when we ask the navigator of our car to drive us to a specific destination, or when we use our voice to call uh, normally a customer service or a chat, and uh, on the other side, there is not a human to answer us, but there is a machine that is going to provide us a lot of information now, okay? I started to work on conversational AI for customer care in 2016. At that time, it was just about intent-based, uh, I would say discriminative AI. It was not generative AI, okay? Um, so we, we programmed the uh, customer service IVR or the chatbot based on what we predict that the customer would ask and then provide some static response with certain level of flexibility, but it was not generative. And then a couple of years ago, actually GPT is in place, you know, since uh, I think five, for five, six years now. Then uh, the generative AI models uh, came out. At the beginning, I didn't know what to do with that because for example, in customer care application, I need a very precise, specific answer to pro be provided to customers. I cannot be creative. Mm? I cannot use that much the temperature inside the Anthropic or OpenAI or other. Mistral and so on. But then, uh, in the last, I would say, 12 months, uh, some technologies like uh, nice fine tuning, retrieval augmented generation, retrieval uh, um, L -L -L -A -M, language application model, function callings. Okay, there are now a lot of possibilities. So you can use now those kind of technologies to use generative AI LLM to provide quite a good experience to customers, uh, either with the voice bot, chat bot, maybe in the future video bot with avatar as well. And of course, this morning, if you seen the open search, they provide a very good vector database. This is another enhancement. So now we are able at the end of the day to use generative AI 
for this purpose. And uh, what happened in the last few months, I would say, is that, uh, okay, every week there is, uh, okay, OpenAI releasing these new big models, Anthropic, the other models, Gemini, the other models, Mistral, Llama, and this is general purpose models. Um, apart from that, we are noticing uh, an increasing number of specific trained models, maybe small models, very quick to answer, um, but very specialized, okay? So we can use RAG and other technologies to design AI agents, AI assistant, to provide a specific kind of information. So for example, I can have my agent uh, specialized in healthcare, the other one in finance, the other one in food delivery, whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Because they have a very specific knowledge domain and they are very good in providing that kind of information. So now getting in, into the details about what we are doing at the Open Voice Interoperability, I will talk about our team later. Why interoperability between different AI assistant, AI agent is important? Why we thought about this? Well, there are a lot of chatbot AI systems around the world now. We're talking about millions of that now. Some of them try to talk each other. Um, they are provided uh, on several kind of different uh, uh, kind of system, infrastructure, provided by different organization. Um, each one is built on different technologies. Maybe I can have my specialized uh, healthcare bot specialized uh, built on Llama 3, and then I have another bot that is providing more specific uh, healthcare support deployed with total different technology. And they are not able to talk each other. So that comes with uh, some limitation in terms of scalability. Um, so scalability is one of the key that drove us to say, okay, why don't we come out with some kind of specifications to have different AI assistants built with different technologies to be able to interact with each other. There is another reason. If you think about uh, the big one, okay, the big uh, AI models. They, they are scraping the web, they are trying to get all the information they, they can from the public information, of course. Mm? But the public information is only 4%, according to this research, of the total amount of information in the world. The other information, I would say luckily, are private. They, they are stored in our CRM, in our document manager, uh, on our computer maybe, or on our private cloud. And so those public models cannot access that kind of data very easily, okay? So again, the need for specific AI models to talk each other, to ask other kind of, to, to make escalation to other AI models whenever they need something more specific. Uh, finally, uh, the European Digital Market Act, one of the things that is promoting is the interoperability between applications, okay? A uh, few um, introduction about uh, the history of our group this project, the Open Voice Interoperability, um, started uh, with an MIT project uh, in early 2018, and then uh, uh, became part of the Linux Foundation, and now since November 2023, so quite recently, is part of the Linux Foundation AI and Data. There are two projects. One is about ethical, conversational AI application, the other one I'm talking about today is about interoperability, okay? So the idea here is to build conversational AI assistant just like the web. If you think about the web, you have now standards, RESTful applications, HTTPS, that you can normally use to access, to have applications to talk each other. So why cannot we have different conversational AI assistant to talk each other? 
And so we designed a specification, we call that a universal API, that uh, actually it's a set of JSON API, okay, nothing fancy, nothing special. But the good thing is that you can use natural language API to have different AI system to talk each other. Hmm? I will show you some example later. So it's a state machine actually. Every AI assistant can move from idle to ready status, can send utterance, can send what we call whisper, can send invite to invite other agents in the conversation by using a standard JSON structure to do that. This is an example, okay? This is one of the AI assistant I built to play with that. This assistant is specialized in providing information about books and author. Mm -hmm. It's called Athena. And uh, you can see here uh, the JSON request. Mm, there is the, 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 the first agent is going to ask my Athena agent uh, information about this writer. This is an Estonian writer. And this is the answer. Uh, you can download a completely open sandbox to play with that and uh, you can have access to this kind of uh, diagram, okay, state diagram that allows you to see exactly the messages exchanged between AI agents. Uh, we have a use case in Estonia, the Estonian government, they are pretty advanced in terms of digitalization tried our API. So they provide a, a chatbot service to the citizen. A basic one is going to ask the citizen for information, but then maybe the citizen would like to have some more specific information. Maybe, I don't know, something about the visa or some, it was used also for COVID and for healthcare specific information. So the first assistant cannot answer to the customer because of it doesn't know about that or because of privacy. So it needs to find another assistant specialized in that kind of, in providing that kind of information. So it's going to ask a specific agent, a discovery agent, hey, tell me about who, who can provide me this kind of information. And then the discovery agent is going to find the available agent. Uh, the available agents can provide a manifest to declare exactly what it is specialized on. And so it sends the manifest back and uh, then the primary assistant can ask information about what it wants to the specific agent. Um, this is the manifest request. Uh, this is an example of manifest built with our standard specification. It's very simple. This is the manifest of my uh, assistant specialized in book information. Okay, you can see here a description of the agent the capability of the agent, in this case, uh, it provides information about books, author, ASBN editors, the language, and so on and so forth. I think it's now time to play a little demo. If the network and everything is working, let's see. Otherwise, I have a backup video. <laughs> but let's try the demo first. So um, I will share with you the QR code to access our GitHub repository where you can download our sandbox. The sandbox is a, a framework written in Python. Of course, it's open. Uh, you can modify that, you can download and modify that. You can even collaborate with us and send pull requests if you want. Um, it's not a product, okay? It's something that you can use to play with this, with our specifications, okay? To see the potential of this. So it's written in Python, let's, uh, Let's start again that to be sure it's up and running. So when you start the sandbox, it listen on the, this port, the 6002, and then I can start the sandbox. Uh, I can choose several available AI assistant already deployed here. You can of course deploy your AI agent and add your agent here if you want. For this demo, I'm using the agent called Cassandra. Cassandra is a, an agent that is going to help me going for uh, some errands. So Cassandra will use 
our JSON API to talk with other agents and so to forward me back and forth with other agents depending on what I'm going to ask her. So the first thing I'm going to do with Cassandra is send an invitation to her and then uh, let's see how it works. Hi Diego, how can I assist you today? Hi Cassandra, I'd like to buy some flowers for my wife's birthday. Absolutely. Would you like me to connect you with the local florist shop to arrange a flower purchase? Hi Diego, what kind of flowers are you looking for today? Bright and cheerful, romantic, or something else? Do you have some daisies? Hi, Diego, are you looking for something bright and cheerful, romantic, or maybe something else? What's the occasion? Do you have some daisies? Absolutely, Diego, we have beautiful daisies. Are you looking for a bouquet or an arrangement with other flowers? Let's add some eucalyptus in a clear base. Daisies are a great choice. Unfortunately, ukuleles aren't typically a floral shop's offering. How about adding some sunflowers for a bright and cheerful mix? Yes, please, add some sunflowers. Great. Daisies and sunflowers make a cheerful combo. We can't add actual ukuleles, but we can include a cute ukulele-themed card. Does that sound good, Diego? Yes, please. Great choice, Diego. How about a mix of daisies, sunflowers, and some ukulele accents for a cheerful and fun arrangement? Anything else you'd like to add? That's fine, thank you. Perfect. Where would you like these cheerful flowers sent, Diego? Should I use the credit card on file? Send it to my, to my home. Yes, use the credit card on file. Great. I'll send a cheerful bouquet with daisies, sunflowers, and ukuleles to your home using the card on file. Thanks for your order, Diego. Goodbye and bloom on. Hi, Diego. How can I assist you today? I'd like to order my dinner. Can you connect me with my Thai restaurant? Sure thing. I'll connect you with your favorite Thai restaurant. Hi, Diego. I'm Sukanya, the restaurant manager. How can I help you today? By the way, our special is Pad Thai with shrimp. Would you like to start with an appetizer? So you can see here the, the JSON structure of our universal API. I can go on, of course. Uh, I'd like to order the pad thai with shrimps, please. Make it spicy. Sure thing, Diego. Spicy shrimp pad thai coming right up. Would you like to add an appetizer? Our special today is crispy spring rolls. Yes, let's add some spring rolls, please. Absolutely, Diego. Pad thai with shrimp ups. Make it spicy, and an order of spring rolls, would you like to pick it up in some sub-minutes? i pick it up in one hour. Hi Diego, I've got your order for a spicy pad thai with shrimp and spring rolls, ready in an hour, see you then. Hi Diego, how can I help you today? I need to send a 2LB package to California. I can assist with that. Do you need to know the shipping options or would you prefer I connect you to the post office for more details? Connect me to the post office, please. Sure thing, Diego. Connecting you to the post office now. Hi Diego, I'm Andrew, the postmaster. How can I help you with USPS mail and packages today? How much does it cost a 2LB package to California? Hi Diego. For a £2 package to California, rates vary. USPS Priority Mail might cost around $9 to $15, depending on the distance. You can check USPS.com for precise price. That's fine, thank you. Okay, of course you can go back and forth different AI agents. And uh, again, you can see here the JSON structure, you can see here the sequence diagram with the specific standard messages exchanged between the different AI agents. 
Okay, this is an example of sequence diagram. Uh, what I show you, okay, Cassandra, the florist, uh, the post office, there are other assistants. You can find the technologies we use to build those kind of assistants. But again, we are completely agnostic about that. That's the beauty of that. And you can use that JSON sending natural language to have those agents to interact with each other. Um, who we are, this is the group run right now. So there are different people with different experience. You are free to join, of course, our team if you want. We normally have uh, one uh, meeting every week and there are people all around the world, okay? Mainly European and uh, American right now. Um, Okay, so this is about the specification. If you want to scan this QR code, you will access the GitHub and you will find there two main set of specifications, okay? The first one is uh, the, what we call the envelope dialogue JSON specification, which is what you saw in my demo. So the JSON that you see, they are sending the invitation, they are sending the utterance whenever the agents are conversating each other. And then there are a second set of specifications called manifest. And those, it is about the discovery, the manifest, the discovery agents. I didn't show that in the demo, but I mentioned about that. This is our paper published on archive. So it explains a little bit more in details what we have done. You should find some documentation on our GitHub anyway, but if you want to have a look uh, at the publication, maybe you can find some use case there and maybe collect more information. Uh, and this is the sandbox, okay? So this is the uh, GitHub repository where you can download the Python framework I used here to run my demo. Feel free to play with that, send us a comment. We are also on Discord. Uh, we can chat about this. We welcome any suggestions, of course. And that's a pretty much all on my side. I think we are on time and uh, any question, I will try to do my best to answer. And any suggestions? Yeah, please. Uh, what, is the, what are the main uh, markets that you think will uh, adopt this kind of uh, multi Multimodal approach? Um, well, I don't think there is a specific market. Of course, the telco providers could do that, but um, I explained in Europe, for example, the public service in Estonia. Uh, but there are, uh, I don't know, maybe healthcare or other industry. I don't, I don't see a specific industry for this. What I can see is that uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, customer service, yeah, especially customer service, using chatbot or voice bot to interact with customers should have something like this because maybe the first level of chatbot is going to provide some information, but then again, some other information, it, this kind of chatbot is not entitled to provide. And so it needs to rely to other agents and so on and so forth. This is, by the way, something I noticed uh, uh, looking at the, you know, the agentic hype that there is now. Mm? Even OpenAI just released O1, which is a little bit of agentic. So it, it serves multiple agents in a workflow trying to scale up. But this is, of course, proprietary. Mm? So there are already some agentic multi-agent solutions, but they are... Some of them are open, some of them are proprietary, but even the open one, you need to use their framework uh, to play with that, okay? The difference here is that uh, I can have completely different technologies to talk each other by using this standard API. A question from there? Yes, of course, this is just a demo. It was repeated by Cassandra several times, how I can help you. But that's how Cassandra is built. 
you don't have to do that uh, necessary, okay? You can do something smarter. The next thing we are working on now in the specification is indeed to have a more smart agent that we call the floor that is going to coordinate and orchestrate different conversation. Mm -hmm. And the next level would be to have even some kind of multiple agents inside a single conversation. So to have AI agents in a conference call, which at the beginning I was thinking, what does it mean? <laughs> but then there are some applications interested for that. Interesting for that. Yes, so here, yeah, here we are using in the, in the demo, in the sandbox that you can download a WebKit. I didn't mention about this. It's a good question. This is the architecture. So we use a WebKit, which is so far open and more compatible with uh, Google Chrome and Edge. It doesn't work very well with Firefox and Safari, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it's totally uh, free and open, okay? Uh, but this is just for the demo, of course. Any more questions? Okay, I will be here hanging around for the next, uh, for today and tomorrow. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any other idea or questions, okay? Thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the event. <laughs>